Hello and thank you for tuning in. You're watching The Property Guide on ET Now. Now, this is the show where we comb through the entire realty market and find a home that's perfect for you. If you have questions about buying a home, getting a home loan, a legal problem that you're facing, feel free to write to us. Our email ID is at the bottom of your screen. And you know you can reach me personally on Twitter as well. It's always exciting to hear from you. Well, on the show this week, we're going to take a view on the Indian realty market. We'll step back for a second and take a look at what the larger picture looks like. Now, for the last one year, there were a lot of expectations from the new government. Then there were expectations from the union budget, from the land acquisition bill, and from the RBI. We have had two rate cuts, but what about all of the rest of it? At what point will this government actually manage to execute its plan of a home for every Indian family? We only have seven years left for that deadline. On this episode, we're going to take a look at what the market is going to look like for the rest of the year. And I have just the list of guests with me to do that. Niranjan Hiranandani is co-founder and MD at Hiranandani Group. Niranjan, Hello. it's always a pleasure to have you join us on the show. Thank Ramesh you. Nair, CEO and International Director at JLL India. And Samantha Das is the Chief Economist and Director of Research at Knight Frank India. Gentlemen, of course, uh, it's a freewheeling conversation. Free will, feel free to interrupt and jump in whenever you want to. Uh, Ramesh, I'm going to start with you. We've, uh, there, there were a lot of expectations, obviously. We have had two rate cuts. Uh, is that enough, for at least for the residential market right now? Have you had to perhaps re-look at the market at JLL saying, OK, maybe this is not going to be as, as good as we thought it would be in the beginning of the year? See, the rate cuts is definitely a welcome move, uh, gives a lot of positive sentiment in the market. The general expectation is uh, over the next uh, 8 to 12 months, we would see a series of rate cuts. Uh, we could see a, a decrease uh, of close to 100 to 125 uh, basis points. Uh, but having said that, if you look at the overall uh, price increase in the residential market over the last two years, except Pune, which has seen a 14% and a 15% increase in 13 and uh, 14. Most other markets, the three biggest uh, residential markets in the country are the NCR, Mumbai and uh, Bangalore. NCR uh, has hardly seen any increase. It's been uh, 6% and 0%. Mumbai has been 2% and 7%. And uh, Bangalore has been around 6% and 5%. So that's the numbers for you over the last uh, two years. It's been, uh, it's been a tough two years uh, for the residential market. We believe these uh, rate cuts, uh, once translated into banks actually cutting the rates, uh, not yet uh, happened, will start happening uh, over the next uh, two, three weeks. We should see the positive uh, sentiment coming back into the market. So overall, a good time because uh, markets seem to have bottomed out. Still, many developers have not yet started advertising mm. the reduced uh, prices. We believe uh, this would be the good time to go sit with developers, negotiate uh, in front of them, be ready to write a check and uh, get a good deal. All right, this is interesting. I'm going to bring you in, Samantha. Here. You've, uh, you've released a report that says residential sales in the last two quarters of 2014 were at a three-year low. New launches fell by 22% across the country. Um, new launches were lower by 28% when we compared them to 2013. And worse off still, you said we're only going to see moderate growth of 4% going forward. Yeah. Now, is it still 4%? Have, you want to revise that further down? Yeah, you still it's, think it's going to be 4%? See, I mean, it's, uh, it's some sort of uh, uh, projection, forecast. Uh, it can be 4, it can be 3 or 6. But what we are trying to say is, that the bottoming out has happened. Mm. So whatever we will see, uh, we'll see a positive growth across all the cities. Probably a city like NCR, which has seen a 45% uh, you know, a reduction in, in yes. sales mm. uh, in, in 2014 versus 2013, that will come down to probably a 25% degrowth in 2015 or 20% degrowth. It is, uh, I don't think NCR will touch a positive growth in this year, but the rest of the cities I see, uh, even on, if on it's... On what basis, but I mean, are you saying that it, it can't get any worse, which is why it's going to get better? I no, mean, what trigger uh, are you looking the at? The point is there are several drivers, you know, mm. of, of demand for residential. Right. Those drivers, we can see that more impacting cities other than NCR. Mm. And NCR has a lot of supplies also uh, in the pipeline. The mood is not very positive in residential sector. You have to have. You have to give time, the, uh, you know, to the volume to pick up. Okay, Niranjan, Obviously, you were very vocal before the budget about what you expected, what you thought the industry needed. We didn't get any of that, except that one clarity on REITs that we did get. 
Now, we've heard the analysts, they say that it's going to be slow, it will be a recovery, but it'll be a slow recovery. What are you seeing on the ground in terms of sales? Are you happy with, uh, with the first three months of the year? No, I'm not happy with the first three months of the year at all. I think it's a miserable situation which has happened in the last three months. And I don't think the budget has helped in view of the fact that the only thing that they have really done is increase the service tax uh, implication on under construction property. So, in fact, affordable housing has become unaffordable. So I think there, there's a challenge to the government over there. And the price tax, uh, cuts are only the beginning. I think we're going to see a lot of more price cuts uh, necessarily to do if they want to take off India, if they want to make in India, if they want to make more housing. And if they want to make their targets, you're going to see a lot of growth. But I'm seeing another positive side. I think I see industrial uh, production growth going up. I see that overall GDP is improving. I see an uh, inflation target being met. So I think you are going to see a little contrarian view from me coming in the fact that overall demand in respect of houses is definitely growing exponentially. There's been a lot of wait and watch in the last couple of months. Those people are going to convert. A lot of people were waiting for banks' rate cuts, as uh, Ramesh just said, that they both just said that the rate cuts were expected but not happened from the banks. I think uh, people don't know that if uh, they take a variable rate uh, uh, today, uh, borrowing that even if the rate cut takes place tomorrow, they are entitled to the rate cut as per the uh, RBI guideline. So what is in reality happening is a lot of people are postponing the buy position, thinking that the rate cut is going to happen. And since they take 15-year money, 20-year money, I think it makes a large effect on them if there is a rate cut expected in the future. So I'm bullish for the future, not as uh, I don't think there's going to be slow growth uh, as is being predicted for the Mumbai region market, partly because the DC rules and other things will put most of the new takeoffs into a stop, stop, stop situation. So you're going to see a limited supply coming into the market in the next 12 months while the demand will pick up. So I'm bullish in the Mumbai market. But Raj, I want to ask you this. Now, we didn't get any direct impact from the government in terms of regulation. In, we've not seen the real estate regulator. There's no movement happening on that. The land acquisition bill is also slightly, you know, uh, not as clear as we thought it would be. Now, if we're going to rely on GDP, inflation, make in India, industrial production, this is something that will take a lot longer to have an impact on sales. So what is your outlook in terms of how long it will be before the number of sales improve per quarter? Do you think it's going to happen in the next six months or will it take longer than that? I think you'll have to ask Mr. Jaitley and Mr. Venka and I do on this question because they haven't done much in the budget in relating to this and we are hopeful that at least uh, they're going to have something in the regulation bill which actually promotes housing rather than further curbs it. So I think what we really need to do is a driver from the government, which has not happened. Faye, you are absolutely correct. A lot of expectations have been belied in terms of affordable housing and uh, uh, the service tax is actually a bad thing which has happened. So I agree with you. Uh, we are more relying on the external market in terms of GDP growth. You absolutely hit the nail on the head and that's going to be a little slower than expected. So they've really missed the bus by uh, not being able to push construction like it was done in China and other countries to use construction industry as a leverage in order to increase GDP. Now they're expecting that overall increase in all the other activities will push up construction and demand and other things. I agree with uh, Narendran Bhai. Just two, three more uh, points. Uh, there's been a lot of emphasis on infrastructure investment. Mm -hmm. I think that will uh, eventually help the real estate sector, better roads, uh, better sewerage, better connectivity will uh, definitely bring in more it, land for development. In all fairness, that's all talk still. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I fully agree with Faye <laughs> because you have you have a lot of discussions on infrastructure, smart cities, hmm. but there is no clear cut milestones, you know. And and I think the allocations that are made, of course, it's it's maybe uh, you know you can always increase the allocation, but I didn't find any concrete. You you know, you know, you know steps. Ramesh and Niranjan, feel free to jump in if you want to at this point. The thing about these infrastructure allocations, first of all, I'd like someone to tell us what happened to the infrastructure allocation from last year, hmm. if you're going to make a fresh one this year. And we were all looking at this budget as, you know, okay, don't, don't give us freebies, but tell us what you're thinking. Hmm. Tell us where the plan is. Give us a clue about where you're taking this entire country forward and in terms of smart cities, affordable housing. We make didn't in get, India. Make in India. We didn't get any concrete plan. There was no clue at all about how any of these things are going to come to pass. Absolutely. So I think that way, Absolutely. you know, an allocation really doesn't help. I want to bring Niranjan in here. You want to say something? Please go on. 
Yes, you know, everybody was saying that commercial will not pick up. We had anticipated that commercial will pick up in some sorts in this year, and it has happened. We do see a huge increase in interest in commercial buying and leasing. Uh, this is quite active on most of the fronts that we are operating, and we find it this quite a pleasant surprise. So I think that's the first positive. The second positive which I see is uh, what is happening in Maharashtra, Mumbai metropolitan region. Uh, the chief minister of Maharashtra has been pursuing Consistently in the last four months following up the five major infrastructure projects of the MMR. The first is the Cross Harbour Bridge, the Coastal Road, uh, the uh, Navi Mumbai Airport, the Metro, which is very big and, and he's pushing it, and also the Pinjal River project, which will bring 24 by 7 water to Mumbai on a continuing process. And that's very, very important for Mumbai and also to keep the water pipes clean. Uh, and not allow sewerage to go into a back burner when the pipes are empty. I think these five major projects are going to be a boost for Mumbai region. So one more positive from an infrastructure push point of view, commercial from the other push point of view, interest rate drops, I'm expecting another 50 basis points in the next 30 to 45 days. I think a combination of this could help the real estate market to pick up faster. Otherwise, you'll have to wait till uh, maybe August, September, October. We're going to have to take a very quick break on that note, but we're still, we're still talking about the same things. Great infrastructure plans, but it really depends on execution. If at all those infrastructure plans will actually translate into something that will change our lives. Stay tuned. On the other side, we're going to take a closer look at that commercial market. What cities are actually seeing an uptick and what does this mean for you as an investor? Should we now be focusing on commercial property? That's on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to watching the Property Guide in ET. Now we're taking a closer look at what this year is going to look like for us as property investors. Now before we went into break, all three of our guests were, uh, you know, sort of in unanimous agreement that the commercial market is doing far better than the residential market this time. And I want, I want some more clarity about what markets we're talking about. When you say commercial, Ramesh, I'll start with you. What cities are you seeing the largest uptake in? See, overall, uh, last year was a good year in terms of uh, commercial. We saw an absorption of uh, 30 million square feet, uh, which was an increase of 3 million square feet, uh, more than uh, what we saw in 2013, where nearly 27 million uh, square feet. At 30 million, it's the second best year ever in commercial absorption. Vacancy rates uh, dropped to 16%, uh, which is the lowest we have seen since uh, 2009. The two cities which saw the maximum growth, Bangalore, we saw an absorption of uh, going up by nearly 70 percent, mm -hmm. followed by uh, Delhi, uh, which saw an absorption uh, rate uh, increase of close to 48 percent. So these two are the big markets. Uh, going forward, what we see is uh, absorption is expected to further go up. This year, we believe uh, absorption would be around 32, 33 million uh, square feet of uh, office space. So we believe more developers, this is the time for developers to start thinking contrarian, start thinking uh, commercial. Niranjan Bhai clearly mentioned it. Uh, demand is co increasing considerably in all markets across India. Well, uh, what are your numbers telling you? Are you? Do you also agree that Bangalore and the NCR are, are uh, you know, showing more promise? And, and my question is going to fundamentally boil down to this. If I am a real estate investor at this point looking for an opportunity, should I be looking for commercial property in these two cities then instead of considering a home? I would uh, still look at Mumbai and Bangalore. Okay. And also Pune, because if you see the supply side, as uh, Ramesh was talking about, the quality supply in Pune is, is really, really very, very, uh, you know, is restricted mm. and uh, whatever we have the data the entire data we saw that supply that is completion that is coming uh, you know in june july of 2015 after that there will be a lag of one year and this is more or less across all the cities so uh, that's where i'll put my money in in pune mumbai and bangalore all right i want to bring niranjan here uh, niranjan uh, tell us this when you have friends and family meet you at dinner parties and ask you whether it makes sense right now to buy an apartment at these values or to invest in commercial property, what is the advice you give them really? I would tell all my friends that whenever the market is low, that's the right time to buy. That's the right time to negotiate and right time to get the best deals. But normally people don't listen to me when over the dinner parties that I'm saying the right thing simply because they look at what the whole market is seeing or doing. 
So at this point of time, I would give my friends a contrarian advice that they should go in for residential properties, have the uh, patience to hold for a year, year and a half, and they're going to see it grow. So you'll get the pro products at the best rates today, and the futures really are going to grow for you. So I would be in a buy situation for all my friends uh, whom I would advise, please go in for residential properties. That's the right time to go. And of course, commercial properties are going to grow, but those are actually meant for large commercial establishments who should really go in for more properties in anticipation of the growth of their estimated demand. So uh, for a small person, small buyers, medium and re uh, also big buyers, investors are residential at this point of time would be great because that's where the biggest appreciation would be in the next three to five years. But I want to very quickly ask you this. You did say this is a good time to sit down and negotiate with a builder. So as a builder or a representative of that community, what sort of negotiation are, you know, is the community open to right now? How you know, hard can we push our bargain? Oh, you can, of course, and you get a choice of flats. Um, many times you come over there, you're not able to get the flat of your choice. And uh, even that is a big bargain. You can uh, uh, look at so many things in terms of views, in terms of floor rises, in terms of negotiating. And there's always a possibility of negotiating today if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. So why not buy today? I think it's a good time to get into the buying spree. And uh, you, uh, I assure you that you are not going to regret it at all three to five years from today. Let's take that advice also keeping in mind very carefully that Niranjan Hiranandani is a builder. You want to add something. <laughs> so you have two contrarian views. One guest says by residential. You are, you are, wait, 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 wait. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> I, you asked me that what I would. You, you asked me what you would advise my friends. And I told you it was not for the TV alone. It was for my friends. And that's what I meant. So you can't pull that one on me. <laughs> All right, so that's it. So then Niranjan Hiranandan giving us advice as his friends, and this is what he says. But you wanted to add something. Go our ahead. forecast for residential this year is uh, around 6 to 7 yes. percent, and our forecast for commercial is around 8 to 10 percent in terms of mm -hmm. uh, capital value appreciation. One thing we need to remember is of the total universe of under construction projects in the country, so around $270 billion of uh, construction is happening in this country. Right now, 84 percent is residential and 16% is uh, commercial. So I think uh, it's uh, absolutely yeah. it's there in front of you. Uh, commercial demand is going up, mm -hmm. the supply is drying up, prices will definitely uh, rise in most parts of the I think going, going forward, you know, I, I would say that REIT's in place. Uh, at least some clarifications you know, have, have come from the, uh, from the FM. Uh, I think commercial uh, share will go up in the, in the real estate. Uh, it should go up to at least 20-25%, as Ramesh was saying, 16%. My estimate is around 24-25%. You know, I have a, a more basic argument here as an investor. I want to just ask this. If you're looking at a return of 6 or 7% on residential uh, property over the next couple of years, that doesn't even beat a fixed deposit. And a fixed deposit is so much easier to invest in. So why would I do that right now? Dinajan, you wanted to add something. Please, please come in. Uh, two aspects of it. Uh, uh, if you look at a 15-year scenario or 20-year scenario of investments which have been done in both the markets, whether residential or commercial, I think the residential comes far ahead of commercial as a long-term player. Second, the volatility in the in the in the commercial market is much more higher. So if you're not able to, if the markets are down, the saleability is very, very slow in the commercial, you can still get a residential sale to take place, sometimes as a little lower price. So when we are talking about residential sales to the common person, a person who's not a, 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 a kind of a long-term uh, multiple investor kind of person, I think residential makes more sense in the uh, medium to long term. I think that's what they should really concentrate on. But as far as the uh, sh short term future is concerned, I'm with my friends uh, to say that yes, in the very short run, commercial looks much more aggressive and they should do it, but they should be ready to exit very quickly when they find that the appreciation has happened, which is not what happens to most of the players in the uh, residential segment. They wait for three years because they want to get the benefit of long term capital gain stacks. All right. So before we go into break, this is what I've understood. If you're a sophisticated investor with access to advice and access to analysts and you're a short term investor, commercial property makes more sense for you right now. If you're a long term retail investor, you might still want to consider residential property if you're willing to hold on 
for that long. And if you're just looking for a home to live in, now is a good time to drive a really, really hard bargain. Stay tuned on the other side. We'll have all of our guests recommend actual locations and neighborhoods. That's on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching Property Guide in Ishi. Now, it's a very, very interesting show, but we're running out of time, so I'm going to keep this really brief. I want each of our guests to give us a recommendation of one city that they believe will do really well and one market, whether that's residential or commercial, is up to them. Niranjan, I'm going to start with you. Um, what are you more bullish, most bullish on right now in terms of the cities? I know you're, you're looking at several cities as uh, you know, possible markets for construction. Which one looks most promising for you and which neighborhood? Uh, I think the the periphery of Mumbai, the Mumbai metropolitan region, so to say, and uh, I've been focusing on the area of Panvel, Naina, Navi Mumbai, where the airport is expected, uh, on the lines of Bombay Pune Road. I think that's the most bullish market that I'm looking for in the next three to five years. All right. So Panvel, Ramesh? Residential, uh, Pune and Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Commercial, uh, Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore. Uh, in terms of locations, uh, Navi Mumbai for uh, residential, outer ring road uh, in Bangalore. All right, so Navi Mumbai and the OR are. I'll pick up Mumbai for residential. Uh, I will go for Chembur, uh, Ghatkopar stretch, as well as Navi Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And in commercial, uh, I will go again by Mumbai. And that's my, uh, the central Mumbai, that uh, lower parallel and those places. All right, so it doesn't matter what the numbers say. Somehow Mumbai always winds up at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to talking about investments, especially in this real estate market. It's a fascinating market. And you know, week after week, we're right here on Property Guide to guide you through it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. Niranjan, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I do hope you'll join us more often in the future. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Remember, you can reach me, email, Facebook, Twitter, any of those things. It's on your screen right now. It'll be my pleasure to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching.